Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of the Daily Debate. I'm your host for tonight, Mohammed Abdelrahim. We'll be discussing Egypt's uh, youth uh, role in driving economic growth and societal advancement. This as the uh, youth uh, empowerment uh, in uh, Egypt is, uh, has been taking uh, 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 giant leaps in the past uh, 10 years, uh, as uh, it is uh, clear that it is in the state's uh, vision to empower youth uh, Egypt is a youthful uh, population uh, at large uh, uh, to harness the potential, the great potential of our brilliant uh, youth. Uh, um, uh, they are the catalysts for sustainable uh, development, really. Uh, we've had uh, really uh, um, education um, uh, programs, training programs, uh, supporting youth initiatives and entrepreneurship and promoting SMEs and, and all, all of this, again, lies in the area of empowering uh, the youth uh, uh, to be a, a main driving engine for economic growth, uh, political participation as well as societal advancement. Uh, we'll be discussing this uh, issue tonight uh, with our uh, distinguished guest, Dr. Mohammed Amir. And he's a graduate of the Presidential Leadership Program, International Relations and Youth Conferences uh, Coordinator. And he's a linguistics uh, uh, professor. A very good evening to you, um, uh, thank Dr. You so Hammer, much. and thank you for joining thank us. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be here in the great Egyptian television. One doesn't get the privilege to be here every day, so pleasure is mine, of course. Thank you very much, uh, you. Dr. Amir. Uh, allow us, please, and allow us, dear viewers, as always, to start our program yes. by watching together a report about our main topic for tonight and then we'll come back and start our discussion. The new cabinet program introduces several pivotal initiatives aimed at fostering sustainable development and improving the quality of life for the nation's youth. The second axis of this comprehensive government program replaces a strong emphasis on youth empowerment, recognizing the crucial role that the young people play in driving economic growth and social advancement. This focus encompasses a range of sub axes designed to equip young Egyptians with the skills, resources and opportunities needed to thrive in a rapidly evolving global landscape. A cornerstone of the youth empowerment axis is the commitment to providing advanced educational and training programs tailored to the demands of the modern labor market. In recognition of the dynamic nature of today's job market, the government aims to align educational curriculum with the skills required by contemporary industries. This includes the integration of technology and digital literacy into educational programs, ensuring that young people are professional in the tools and platforms that are reshaping the workplace. To achieve this target, the government is collaborating with educational institutions and industry leaders to design and implement programs to create a link between education and employment. By equipping young people with relevant knowledge and competences, the government aims to increase their competitiveness and readiness for the workforce. Beyond education and training, the second axis also prioritizes the support of youth initiatives and entrepreneurship recognizing that innovation and entrepreneurial spirit are vital for economic diversification and growth. The government is implementing measures to nurture and support young entrepreneurs. This includes providing financial and technical incentives to youth who will start their own businesses, thereby fostering a culture of innovation and self-reliance. Thank you very much, uh, Abir Hussein and Rasha Abdul Hamid, for this report. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, to the daily debate uh, uh, for tonight as we are discussing Egypt's youth role in driving economic growth and societal uh, development. Uh, Bef uh, with Dr. Mohammed uh, Amir, uh, who is the graduate of the Presidential Leadership Program, International Relations and Youth Conference Coordinator. Before we start the Q&A session, We'll go um, first uh, to, for Adhan al uh, the call for the night uh, prayer, and then we'll come back here, inshallah, and start our discussion with our dear guests.
Well, that was uh, the call for the night prayer. Uh, then, uh, Al-Isha, um, welcome back, uh, the viewers, to the daily debate uh, with Dr. Mohammed Amir, the graduate of the Presidential Leadership Program, uh, International Relations and Youth Conferences Coordinator, as we are talking about Egypt's uh, youth role in driving the economic growth and societal advancement. Now, Dr. Amir, um, in your opinion, how does the uh, state's uh, uh, vision define youth empowerment within its uh, axis of work? Of course, uh, that's a very, very nice question. And it's a long story, by the way. Uh, we can remember since the um, uh, 2014 when the, uh, this happened through the um, uh, inception of the first presidential term by His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. And uh, the main focus was on uh, qualifying young people uh, to leadership, to business, to um, developing our economy. So one of the main goals, one of the main objectives that we are uh, up objectives on the ground, uh, the inception of the presidential leadership program, and also which led to the inception of the uh, National uh, Training uh, Academy. Mm. Actually, the program, uh, the idea itself, actually it was very new to our scene, to our lives, because this is for, for the first time we're talking about the president himself in person, talking directly, there is a direct channel between him and the young people. This was not there before, even before, uh, in, in the previous uh, regimes and, um, and the system that we had in our country. So actually this direct channel created what we call right now uh, a database for leaders, for thinkers, for, um, it's like a repository for uh, potential capabilities that we can, so if we needed, um, for example, to uh, depend on certain capabilities or potentials, we can actually uh, get a hand to this particular uh, database in order to have, yes, we have these uh, minds in our country. So for the first time, we have a database for these uh, minds gathered together for the first time. So actually, it's very important to have, to have this. And this was the, uh, the most important objective by the state itself and the thought about it. And this actually led to a lot of programs concerning economy, education, uh, entrepreneurship, mm. uh, politics, even politics, as mm. you've mentioned uh, before. So actually, mm. this was a very important step by the state itself. And for the first time, you have this database under your hand. So you can actually get fresher minds, fresher mm. uh, capabilities, potential. Mm. So actually, I think this is um, a very nice um, step by the state, which I'm really proud of. Thank you. I, I was going to ask you, and you talked about the axes of uh, empowerment, as you mentioned. Yes. Uh, empowerment uh, when it comes to developing the, the skills, uh, providing uh, job opportunities, sponsoring the uh, SMEs, entrepreneurship. Uh, there is also societal uh, empowerment and, and political em empowerment. Yes. For you, which is like the most important? What, what is the most important for the youth, you think? Actually, I think there are different levels that we got passed by. So actually, in the beginning, we focused on gathering these young people together. And after that, we can filter how they can think, how they can add, how can uh, they contribute to the country. So first, it was the filtering stage. After that, we moved to... Uh, economic because we have a lot of problems with the economy and we had uh, this economic uh, uh, setback during the, uh, the war between uh, Ukraine and Russia and after, after that we had a lot of problems also concerning the uh, COVID-19 problem so actually we focused on the economic, mm. uh, the economic problem when mm. we got out of that we focused uh, now I think the file of education itself mm. actually this is the most important f uh, file we're going to focus on mm. right now so actually uh, moving from economy to inter entrepreneurship mm. the societal of course so we're going to talk about mm. uh, decent life initiative mm. after that and now we're move, move, moving forward with the educational uh, file and topic i think we're going through levels so it's it's escalating so it's not like we're we're working like simultaneously no no we're working on levels um uh, working from one file, we finish this file, we can move to another file, and actually there is a feedback that we can, yes, we can get back to the first file in order to right. check if, if, if anything that can be uh, altered, changed, or, or the even developed. I think we're working on, on this particular system. Right. Uh, w societal development, yeah. one thing that really catches the attention of everyone is how the uh, volunteering yes. um, 
uh, culture uh, has spread uh, yes, uh, here in exactly. Egypt in recent years across exactly. the youth, tell, tell, especially across the youth. Tell us. So a lot of people don't, don't know that uh, one of the most important pillars of the presidential leadership, uh, the presidential leadership program or the PLP, is mainly based on volunteering. So you're not paying, you're getting any payments. So actually, you are getting into this uh, cocoon or this particular program in order to learn and to uh, get benefit out of it. And also, we are going to benefit the country itself or the state itself. So actually volunteering work well volunteering uh, life actually we didn't have this particular uh, mentality before so uh, I'd like to thank the state itself because they focused more on the volunteering uh, capabilities in our country but actually when you look deeper on this file you can find that yes we had a lot of young people that they wanted to volunteer they wanted to go to to do a lot of good things in their lives they wanted to be bit, much better so when you move in this particular level, mm. to, you take this particular step, you learn something and you can teach mm. other people right. um, what you learn. So actually this is the spirit of volunteering work. And this happened through the societal, the societal environment that we learned in, in, in the program and also in the further programs that were created after that. Uh, you, you mentioned for instance uh, Decent Life yeah. and I'm sure many of the workers uh, there are volunteers. Yes, exactly. Dr. Ahmed, you mentioned education and how this file is very important. So I want to ask you about, do you have uh, or do you know about any specific reforms, educational reforms being proposed so uh, for the young people yes. to be ready for the ch ever-changing labor market? I mean, the labor market is changing very fast. Of course. Mm -hmm. And you can see the uh, spread and the outbreak uh, of a lot of private university, community uh, universities here in Egypt, uh, even by the private sector or by the, uh, by the public sector itself, by the states. Actually, you can find that these universities, they mainly focus on certain files and topics. You can enumerate them like digital transformation, digitalization, artificial intelligence. So we're not focusing on the files that we focused on, on the past and you can not also the traditional exactly the conventional ones and you yeah. can also refer to uh, as excellency president of the fantasy said about the files that we need to shed light on so we like can technical education exactly yeah. th th this is very important mm -hmm. and uh, if you uh, I, I don't want to mention uh, names of universities but actually that's very important that you are going to create a database of these young people from like 16 to 21 years old they are weaponed so they are equipped with technologies modern technologies mm. technological minds actually mm. they can put solutions they can uh, in have a lot of problem solving skills that mm. we can take from this repository in order to solve our problems, which mainly can be solved by those fresh minds. Yeah, b because this is a dynamic world. Exactly, I mean, exactly. It's changing very fast. Exactly, yeah. so we're not depending on consistent things, we're not mm. depending on conventional education. No, 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 th this is... Although it's very important. And it's, it's very important, very yes, important. of course, but, yes. uh, you know, these times, mm. you're mm. going to focus on certain topics, mm. these topics that can create this new life, this mm. new mentality, mm. and when you get to know uh, these, these young people, they can use a lot of technology, they can mm. um, actually enrich our minds, because mm. you can see that but when you get older, actually, technology is not one of your pr priorities, but actually when you get, get a lot of mm. young people together, all of them, what they are talking mm. about, technology, mobile mm. phones, computers, mm. uh, artificial intelligence, and you can see a lot mm. of applications are now uh, mm. being used in order to develop our daily lives, mm. including, for example, um, an application for uh, uh, ticketing for uh, ra ra railway stations. There is now an application for uh, just about anything. I I'd, <laughs> I'd like to have this in real life. This yeah. is very important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Elon Musk that yeah. said um, that, you know, the system of education in the world has to change drastically. Rapidly. He, he was not yes. speaking about a certain field of edu yes. speaking about education at large, the uh, system itself. This is, this is the large picture of it. This is the, 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 the mind, the mentality that we're talking about. However, if you focused on the files that we have, we have here in Egypt, you can see that security file needs technology. Education needs technology. Econo economics, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, even, banking. Even engineering and banking. Even, even every single file in your life here. And even, I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about your daily life. So you're using technology. So it wasn't strange by Elon Musk. To, he wants to change this rapidly, consistently, and right now.
that mm. needs to start mm. right now. So mm. I think we are taking our first steps, even even slowly, but we are on the road, we are on track. And we are, the most good. important thing, we are on the right track. This is very important. Very good. Dr. Ayamir, um, in your opinion, how does the new cabinets program uh, support youth initiatives in, yes. uh, in specific, uh, especially regarding uh, economic finance? of course and economic and also industry because these are these files are interchangeable mm. actually when you when you look for the uh, look about the, the the files of the the new ministers the new uh, deputy ministers and the governors by the way um, actually you can find that their portfolios actually they are all circulated about um, being able to provide more solutions to economy to industry um, actually, these solutions were not there before. We didn't have these solutions before. So actually, when you have fresh minds focusing e on economy, providing more initiatives, uh, providing SMEs, initiatives, banking, loans, uh, you can also... Uh, by the way, so if, you, if we compare different gen generations to each other, actually, you can find that this particular generation is lucky enough that the state itself focuses on the um, macroeconomics and the microeconomics at the same time. So uh, you got graduate for example you got graduated from your faculty you finished your mm. own formal education now mm. what you want if you're, if you're going to you want to work so mm. you don't want you don't want to have to to wait for the formal employment to uh, you, as you remember in the past yeah, well, we're, we're the letter yeah exactly the letter and everything yeah, so yeah. now you can open your own company the appointment you can open letter or your own enterprise the sector, exactly yeah. so don't depend on the public sector so also depend on yourself and actually the state itself is helping with this mm. so we are not working with the conventional mentality of the mm. uh, macroeconomics that we mm. used to have in our countries. Actually, when the state itself understands the mentality that needs to be changed in the future, so mm. this particular young man is like yeah. 20 years old or 21 years old. They don't even know about, I'm trying to, you're a, tr a translation professor, so you correct. Of course, I know in Arabic what you have <laughs> had in mind, so I'm going to say, the working force letter. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I, so e this even no longer uh, is in the minds of anyone now. I, yeah. Even even during my time, I, I didn't wait. I didn't wait for that. So no. actually, mm. when but this time is mm. different. Mm. This time is widely different. Mm. So now the state provides you with a lot of solutions, mm. macroeconomics, mic uh, microeconomics, and macro, and mm. also you can get loans. You can get a lot of facilitations. A, a, and here the private the private sector, um, you know, shares. Uh, or, or, or carries a, a real yeah. heavy burden and, and, and th there is a partnership uh, and the, um, the vision is to have a bigger share for the yeah. private sector, sure. bigger and bigger and bigger. Sure, and the state itself understands this very mm. well, so it's not like all times. So um, private sector is now taking the heavy burden, as you say, taking the responsibility for providing these young people with potentials, with capabilities, with opportunities. Mm. And the most important thing is that young people understand this as well. Mm. So, as I told you, that you don't have to wait for this. You can now uh, think about a certain idea, technological, maybe economic, mm. maybe entrepreneurship. You can find a lot of solutions and when you get the help, when you get the contribution of the state itself to help you to move forward with your life, with your own uh, financial uh, mm. financial steps, actually this is positive, the best step by the, by the state. Mm. So initiatives, yes, you can look for a lot of banking um, solutions, you can find a lot of facilitations in order to build up your own solution and your own uh, ideas in order to be mm. achieved and um, provided on the ground. And, and usually we hear a lot today the word unorthodox so exactly. solutions or out of the box exactly thinking. exactly actually mm. this is very important mm. the most important thing about this is that there is a, a mutual understanding between the public sector and the private sector in this particular file so away from uh, orthodox files or uh, conventional ways of getting money getting uh, employment and actually this is this is very crucial if you get these non-conventional or unconventional solutions on the ground actually you get a lot of mental different mentalities different minds so these people think different uh, different from these conventional ways that right. we used to dr Aymer, dear viewers another report about our main topic for tonight it talks about the significant components of youth empowerment here in egypt let's watch and come back to our dear guest 
Youth empowerment is a world that has always been like a far-fetched dream in Egypt until President Abdel Fattah Sisi assumed power in 2014 and put youth on the top of his priorities. This has been evident in the Egyptian state's persistence in taking several steps towards that goal at all levels. A significant component of the youth empowerment access is the promotion of small and medium enterprises which are recognized as key drivers of economic growth and job creation. The government is committed to creating an enabling environment for SMAs by simplifying regulatory process, improving access to finance, and providing market access opportunities. By supporting the growth of the SMEs, the government aims to generate employment opportunities for young people and stimulate local economies. Furthermore, the government keeps promoting initiatives to support youth-led SMEs in sectors with high growth potential such as technology, agriculture and creative industries. These initiatives are designed to harness the innovative capabilities of young entrepreneurs and position Egypt as a hub for dynamic and forward-thinking enterprises. Financial incentives are being structured in the form of grants, low interest loans and subsidies aimed at reducing the initial financial burden on young entrepreneurs. Additionally, technical support is being offered through mentorship programs, business incubators and access to networks of industry experts. These resources are designed to help young entrepreneurs navigate the challenges of starting and growing their business. Through Throughout the last years, the country has developed visions to create a new Egypt in which development traits are in progress, peace and security are prevalent with the youth as component leaders of the future. Thank you, Abir Hussain, again for this uh, report. And back here in the studio uh, with uh, Dr. Mohammed Aamir. Uh, uh, Dr. Aamir, uh, we hear a lot about the fact that uh, SMEs yes. are the backbone of the economy. Yes. So tell us how uh, is the state supporting uh, entrepreneurs and small and medium enterprises? Oh, this, is, this is a very important topic. And um, you can also remember uh, since day one, um, the state itself has been uh, shedding light on this because it's very important to know that uh, when you look at the list of the uh, stock market companies that are registered in our stock companies, you can, you can find that most of these companies are actually established and initiated and accepted by young people. So uh, the larger number of companies that you get uh, away from uh, large and tycoon companies in our country, so you can focus on these uh, tiny details. Tiny yeah, they call them small yes, caps, uh, small uh, and medium caps. Exactly. Cast, uh, you, so they are yeah. gathering themselves. They call mm. they call themselves entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurs. So actually, when you have this database of entrepreneurs, they get fresh mentalities. They get fresh ideas, technology. Uh, economics, uh, transportation, education, a lot of uh, digital solutions. So we have this particular, uh, what I call, a repository, a treasure under your under your hands. So actually, it's not under your control, but actually, mm. this will benefit the microeconomic picture, or the, the the public image of the economy itself. So actually, mm. we, yes, we do have a problem with providing a lot of um, uh, foreign re, uh, reserve and a lot of foreign currencies. Actually, when you find these young people working uh, from day one till now, and they are not uh, stopping their businesses because of the lack of funding or something like that, actually, you can see that, yes, this is helpful to our economy. They are striving, they are moving forward in order to benefit our uh, our economy and our, our country uh, in return. So actually this is very important and yes, I'm really agreeable with you concerning the choice of word backbone, yes. It's mm -hmm. now it's the backbone, it's not the public sector anymore. Mm -hmm. So actually it's very important. And of course also as well, may I add, and I'm sure this has been said before, that youth are the backbone of any society. Of course. And when it comes to Egypt, I mean, over 60% uh, uh, of yes. Egypt's population young people. Yeah, are young, young people. people. Yes. So, 
you know, it's a given fact that yeah. they will be the ones driving the country. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's not it's, only it's, the economic it's, file, yeah. it's even yeah. the political file. And yeah. I'm really proud that I can mm. see that a lot of my colleagues are now mm. appointed as uh, governors. Mm. You can see the examples of Benny Swift and Behera. Mm. You can also find themselves uh, like DBT governors, mm. uh, DBT ministers in a lot mm. of files with a lot of um, portfolios, big mm. portfolios under their hands. Mm. and. It's, it all started in 2014 when His Excellency the President shed light on this particular file. So he wanted to, and even by the way, I do remember that he called it that year, that particular year, this is the year of youth, young mm. people. So mm. he made a lot of conferences for young people. Mm. I would like to meet with these, those people. I would like to know what they are thinking about. I can take benefit of these, uh, these banks of mines. Mm. I, I can get a lot of information from them. I got, get a lot of capabilities from them. So actually, at, after that, after the passing of like uh, 10 years, 10 years that's from 2014 to uh, 2024. Yes. 24. So actually, after 10 years, you can find repository for leaders. Mm. Uh, one day, it will not be surprising uh, to find these young people mm. leaders of mm. this country. I'm not talking politics again, economics. Yeah, I mean, and they are the engine. I mean, of and, and course, they will in different for, files. And for the upcoming decades. Of no, course, not, we're not, it's I'm not, not talking like about today. But you can I'm see about the, the results. Yeah. Yes, we're starting with the results. Yes, yes. so we'll yes. this, mm. this is the beginning. So yeah. when that start, ten years before. So actually, it was a very, very um, courageous uh, step by uh, his excellency. We, the we've president. seen, of course, a lot of. Uh, um, a lot in the file of youth empowerment, women yes. empowerment, yes. empowerment for people with special abilities. Yes, exactly. We've seen that. But s certainly for every, um, um, you know, uh, uh, thing going uh, forward, there are challenges and yes. there are obstacles. Yes. So tell me, and you're, uh, you know, part of this uh, uh, um, uh, leadership program, tell me about the, the challenges, the obstacles that are still facing youth empowerment of issues of course challenging ch challenge number one can be always with the technology the lack of technological um uh, background or uh, education uh, the lack of technological um uh, facilitations so actually this is challenging number one but actually you can find solutions and by the way uh, one of the most important solutions about the, what by the state is the inception of the National uh, Training Academy which actually is the first academy in, in, in the MENA region to focus on the finding technological solutions for a lot of young mm. people so mm. this is challenge number one mm. uh, training programs that focus on technology yes we need a lot of training programs and the, the academy itself provide, is providing this but actually we need a faster pace exactly. I mean just like you said before exactly. we, you believe we are in the right track yes. but we need a faster pace a faster yes mm. this is going to be a rapidly happening uh, as you mentioned like uh, mm. like in, in a must it, it needs to be happen, happening right now so actually mm. this is challenge number, number one challenge mm. number two uh, can be with changing the mentality of a lot of people here in Egypt. I'm talking about common people. So, if we talk, even I was going to ask you if yes. you are if uh, if you are facing uh, 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 you know challenges from from the elderly generations yeah, uh, yeah. from the elder generation. Of course, of course. We not all of them, of course. Not, <laughs> not all of them. Some of them are very open-minded. Exactly, by the way. exactly. But open they are they are very the they are yeah. very few, few people. But actually, when you mentioned that uh, most of our country are formulated by young people we can this this the, there is a very very important um, uh, file in our country which is senior and elders actually these people are all experienced they can provide us with experience with mentorship with a lot of guidance we can take benefit of these people with these mentalities in order to teach young people in order to guide them in order to mm. push them forwards so actually this this merge this interchangeability between young people and elders actually this is the society we're talking about the whole society itself so women young people elders seniors yeah, it's, actually, it's, the it's very society. it's very important yeah. to, to to get the society together which mm. is very important because because you can see a lot of problems happening in our uh this uh region wars conflicts and when you focus on your own society yes we are stuck together mm -hmm. so this challenge is very important and I think we are yes in this particular f file as well we are on the right track because mm -hmm. we don't have any strife we don't have any problems with this mm -hmm. but also this understanding between different layers of the society mm -hmm. this needs to be strengthened mm -hmm. and sustained of course the issue the issue of uh, generations gap uh, yeah. is present worldwide exactly 
even, you know, I, I was thinking, and I'm, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but uh, you are in your 30s. Those who are in their 20s, uh, if, if there is a 10 years between you and, yeah. and the following generation, I mean, they have seen different types of technology or they have been exposed to technology uh, um, before you yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah, and they know happening. more than yes. you. And then you have the, the teens. Uh, and they are the youth of yes, the future, yes. and, and, and also, so, I mean, is there even a gap, is there a gap yes. between those, the those gap and the gap is, is because it, again of the technological revolution? Exactly, mainly? and the gap, and by, let me tell you that the, the gap is expanding. Yeah. Uh, every single lecture, when I go to uh, my students, I tell them that I'm lucky enough to have a, a young age, Talk to you, and you are lucky too uh, to have a young, young man talk to you. But however, after like um, five years, seven years, ten years, actually this gap is is what happening is expanding. So mm -hmm. what we need here is that to we need to provide technological education to both teenagers, young people. Actually, there's a new idea that come to my mind right now. What about elders? Mm -hmm. So they need technology, by the way, mm -hmm. and they will provide Some a lot of, of solutions. Some of them are learning. Exactly. But no matter how well they learn, they will never be like the, uh, the this youngsters. Is, the, 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 this is the, the this is how it's life normal. works. Yeah, exactly. It's normal. So yeah. uh, actually, but, but at least they cope up. Exactly. They're so catching up. Maybe, maybe to the up. minimum. Exactly. They Just need. trying yeah. to bridge the gaps between mm. different generations. Actually, mm. this is the role of the society itself. So actually, mm. when you uh, when you have the, your your own son talking about mm. a certain thing that you don't and don't, don't understand or you don't care about it. So actually, it's very important to look what he's looking about. Mm. Maybe uh, some social media uh, mm. uh, platform. TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or, mm. or, or something. Yes, what this young guy is looking for. Actually, this is very important, and I'd like to explain this particular moment in order to tell a lot of a lot of parents. And I'm a, I'm a parent, by the way. I'd like to tell a lot of parents um, my age. You need to take care of this. You need to. Um, bridge the gap between you and your your your, your mm. son your daughter your, your mm. children concerning mm. technology because you can mm. see a lot of a lot of parents they don't know anything about technology mm. and when you see when you look at their uh, mm. at their children mm. well actually oh, oh my god it's a lot of problems happening mm. a lot of crimes a lot of files that can be mm. open on to the, to their eyes mm. and they can act when when do you look at this mm. so the father the parents are on one place and the children are in a different place so actually but, but this finally as, the gap is very as, important. As, as i close out maybe and we only have a minute left yeah. wouldn't you agree that because egypt and the egyptian society by nature is cohesive is is unified e i i mean e even the rich and the poor y you know think the same way and talk the same way and 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 you know it's not about rich and poor. It's not Actually, about old and young. It's not it's, about it's, it's, a, it's a very Muslim nice or formula. Or it, it, this is a very, very big right? formula. We are a unified, uh, a cohesive society. So, th so this helps in. Uh, in, actually, in bridging the it, generational gap. Exactly. Can I say that? Of course, it actually mm. was this particular cohesion that saved us from these problems. Mm. Actually, when you see these, the different layers of society, mm. the poor and the rich, the uh, different religions, different uh, background, education background, social backgrounds, mm. actually, you don't, you, don't, you don't sense the difference between generations. We Even all have the same interests. Exactly, same we have belief. the same mind, yeah. we have the yeah. same vision. Yeah. It's all about our country. It's the all about jokes. the future. <laughs> of course, the same yeah. everything. So same culture exactly so uh, you can see a lot of countries around us when you find these differences actually conflicts happen but here what happens here in egypt mm -hmm. cohesion so i'd like to praise you that choice of words that yeah. you that you Thank mentioned you. Uh, here. because i think this will help bridge the, ge the of generational course, gap of course and even the technological of course uh, of course this will happen sure Inshallah. And all, uh, all due to, the, to this particular cohesion, of course. Dr. Mohammed Aymer, it's been a great uh, pleasure having you Thank with you. us. Dr. Thank Aymer is a graduate of the Presidential Leadership Program, International Relations and Youth Conferences Coordinator. He's also a linguistics and translation professor. Thank you very much. Thank Dr. you so Aymer. much, sir. It was a pleasure mine. Thank, thank you so you, much. Sir. Thank you. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching the Daily Debates. Goodbye.